Yes, indeed. It is Hoops and Harmony, all presented by Corona. We appreciate you for joining us. We have so many special things planned for you on this show. We're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Shouts out to Pioneer for providing all this equipment. And uh, we're going to have legends and, and, and... Bruh, you know I'm doing a show, right? You're just going to show up and start playing with the equipment? Well, hold up. They can't hear you. Let me actually give you a mic if you're going to participate so we can do this right. The man that needs no introduction, Shaquille O'Neal's in here. Uh, that's that's not even out yet, so don't break it. That's the Rev 7. Don't break it. You doing the show? Yeah, I'm doing the show. Hoops and Harmony? Yeah. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. You want me to leave? Nah. Okay, well. Let's do this. So so that's... I'm standing over here. You want me to stand on your right? Actually, I just wanted... I was, you know, hoping you didn't break it, but you can stand there for a second. But I know yeah. you're more comfortable with the CDJs that you rock yeah. with. Yeah. So go around, I'm a, I'm a, walk I'm around me and, and get situated because... First of all, you're not this tall. <laughs> 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 I just want the world to know you're I mean, not you're just this gonna, tall. Gonna put me on blast like that? No, That's no, okay. Ahead. Okay. So, um, with that being said, you've obviously been the trendsetter. You laid the foundation. I just need to know where did the the, the motivation come from to record the DJ Diesel album back in the day? Where did that motivation come from? It came from the Jays. The Jays. Dr. J and LL Cool J. Wow. On the way to the court. I didn't have a big boom box, but I had a nice size one. <laughs> I'm LL Cool J. I go to the flea market, I get me a fake dookie rope chain. I got my Kango hat on. I want to be LL. You know, my radio, believe me, I like, right? And then when I get to the court, I want to be Dr. J. So, you know, when you're on punishment a lot and you're dreaming about what you want to become, look, when MTV first came out and, you know, the radios and, you know, Rock the Bells and 90 Love, I'm like, he's cool. And then I got to go to his concert. Mm. And by this time, I was a high school All-American, so everybody in the city knew me. They let me go backstage, and I met LL. And from that day, in 1989, we're still friends. I talked to him last night before the show, because, you know, he's doing you know, his radio show. He wanted me to send me some of my joints. And I said, brother, I got to give you your flowers for making me me. And then the same thing goes with Dr. J. I wanted to be a great basketball player. Like, he... I don't want to use the word save my life, but when I was a medium level juvenile delinquent, I watched a movie called The Fish to Save Pittsburgh. It was about Dr. J. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this. And then my father said, you okay. You want to be like him? First thing I need you to do is start doing better in school. So I'm focused on my education. I got all C's. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm an A and B guy. I get all C's. My father takes me to the garden. We sit in the way up top. Dr. J goes baseline. The crowd goes crazy. It's like something just entered my body. Mm -hmm. Like when, when he dunked and the crowd stood up, it's like the basketball guy just entered my body. And I look at my father and I say, sir, this is what I want to do when I get older. And he said, if you listen to me, I'll make you the most dominant big man ever. So shout out to the Jays, LL Cool J, and Dr. J. No question. You were the most dominant ever. We know that. Set the foundation, as I mentioned. But what about the impact of music overall on your game? Pre-game, in-game, post-game, how big of a role did it play for you? You know, music takes me to a place that I didn't know I can go. So, you know, like when I started doing albums, I didn't want to be a rapper. I just wanted to do songs with my favorite people. Because, mm. uh, you know, I went on the Arsenio Hall show. And when I was coming out, I wanted to come out with a bang, right? So I called our city and I said, I don't want to just wear a $20,000 suit and you ask some questions and then I go, I want to do something different. And he was like, what? I said, I want to rap with my favorite rap group. It was Fushnickens at the time. After that, my agent calls and he said, man, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? A three album deal for $10 million. And I'm like, what? And then I, I kind of went, like I signed the record, but then I went home and be like, I'm not a rapper. So then I came up with the concept. I went back to them and said, I'll accept this deal if I could rap with all my favorite rappers. Because like, Nobody wants to hear me rap three albums by myself. So all my favorite artists except I never got turned down. I never got charged. And for me, like, for example, like when I was doing a song with Notorious B.I.G., like he accepted. But I'm, I do a verse. That ain't hard enough for Biggie. I do a verse. Because see, I had a studio in my house. I do a verse. Biggie ain't gonna like that. I do a verse. Biggie ain't gonna like that. So finally, I just came up with that verse. And then this is the day Biggie flies in. And I'm nervous as hell, right? So we go in the studio, Big's like, let me hear it. So I play it, and he started doing this. And then he starts smiling. I'm like, oh, Biggie likes it. <laughs> Biggie likes right. it. So after we got that out the way that my verse was okay, like, listen, I, 
already know when I'm on the track with guys that are superior, I'm not as good as them, but I ain't gonna make them look bad. Facts. See what I'm saying? Right. So I said, Biggie, here's a pen and a pad. I'm gonna go in the house. What you like, you want to get something to eat? I got the chef hooking you up. And he said, no, I'm ready to go. I'm like, what you mean? Like, he never heard the song. He's like, what you mean I'm ready to go? This is the most unbelievable thing I've seen in my life. He went in there and killed it. Mm. 45 seconds, but it was kind of vulgar. So my hand is shaking because I'm out there with the engineer and I'm like, uh, Biggie, that was the dopest verse I ever heard. He said, oh, that's right, Shaq, for the kids, for the kids. Right. And then he came back with the other verse. I still got the original verse. I'm never going to release it. You got to let me hear it. Though. Oh, I'm going to let you hear it. Okay. He, he went off. Okay. Yeah, I definitely. He went didn't all hear the that. way off. So, but like music is just take me away from being a basketball player right quick. Like, so when I was in LA, Death Row had it on lock. So anything Death Row, just because I got to get in that hard feeling now. Like, I know no R&B, no yeah. soft stuff. It's always dun, 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 dun. like I just had to be because, you know, I know they was going to be doing a hacker shack. They're going to be trying to beat me up. So right. I always had to always had to come hard and come hard. Pause. <laughs> but I'm a creature of habit. So if I listen to a song and get 50 points, I'm going to listen to that song all year. Yes, indeed. Well, this is what we're going to do. Can you hang out with me for a little bit? Depends on what you want me to do. Well, I mean, we're going to do something that we're going to have some fun with. How about that? What, you trying to battle me? Battle you? I mean, why not? No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about some lyrics. So hold on for a second. While he's talking about that, he's going to be back in a little bit on the show. I'm telling you, it's going to be crazy. We're going to go viral. You don't want to miss it. Oh, you won't battle me. We're going to go back and forth with the bars? Let's do it. All right, deal. I'll be back. You heard what he said.